What's up everyone? Welcome to our epic Rome adventure. Today we are hitting the city's most iconic spots. The Pantheon, the Colosseum and the Circus Maximus. And of course we taste some incredible pasta, pizza and tiramisu. As well I'll be sharing some tips and hidden locations. Get ready for an unforgettable journey. Let's roll! We kicked off our day with an exciting road trip from Milan to Rome. And our first stop, none other than McDonald's. Because why not? Who doesn't love some familiar comfort food on the road, right? Panzerotti a la McDonald's. It's good. And the best part, pistachio McFlurry. And let me tell you, it's the best McFlurry in the world. Back on the highway, an accident somewhere along the road caused an unbelievable traffic. We spent hours in the car, navigating through the chaos. But by the evening, we finally made it to Rome. We felt exhausted and hungry after such a stressful day. That's why our dinner had to be fast, delicious and close to hotel. It was such a nice coincidence that we decided to go to Dioniso by fruit and roll that evening. The place had an incredible vibe, perfect for unwinding after a long drive. We kicked off the night with a glass of Etna Bianco. The Sicilian wine, known for its high minerality, was the perfect start. The flavors danced on our taste buds. For starters, we indulged in salmon tartare with fermented red cabbage, sea asparagus and delightful tangerine sauce. Combination was as refreshing as it was intriguing. Next, we tasted an Italian version of ratatouille featuring red peppers, eggplant and red onions, all topped with creamy burrata. It was a symphony of flavors. The grand finale was a pasta dish with truffles and shrimp. This unusual combo of strong flavors left us in awe, perfectly wrapping up our dinner. Our next morning started at the iconic Termini railway station, where we decided to hop on the Rome Hop On Hop Off bus and do a circle around the city, showcasing all the legendary places. I have to admit, I've been skeptical about these buses my whole life, but trying it for the first time in Rome was amazing. It gave me a great overview and helped me decide which places I really wanted to visit. I'll definitely do this in every other city I visit from now on. Among the places we visited was the magnificent Colosseum. Did you know that this ancient amphitheater could hold up to 50,000 spectators? It was not only the epic site of gladiator battles, but also hosted mock sea battles, where the arena was flooded with water. Next, we visited the Circus Maximus. This ancient Roman chariot racing stadium could accommodate around 150,000 spectators and was the largest stadium in ancient Rome. Today it's a public park where you can still sense the excitement of the races that once took place there, especially if you take a 3D tour. As we kept driving, we noticed the Victor Emmanuel II monument, also known as the Altar of the Fatherland built to honor the first king of unified Italy. This grand structure is often nicknamed the wedding cake due to its steered, gleaming white marble design. We also passed by the Temple of Hercules, one of the oldest surviving marble buildings in Rome, built around 2nd century BC. Finally, from afar, we caught a glimpse of Vatican City, with the St. Peter's Basilica standing majestically We'll be visiting this iconic place tomorrow morning with the first rays of the sun. Okay. 
After riding the bus for some time, we stepped out into the beautiful neighborhood called Trastevere. This charming area held two special places for us to try some local flavors. Our first stop was Pasta Imperiale, located on Via dei Coronari. This street food spot is known for its fresh homemade pasta. This place has received rave reviews, with a solid 4.5 stars rating on TripAdvisor. Many visitors have praised the quick service, fresh ingredients and authentic flavors. We decided to try their Tonatelli Carbonara, and it was absolutely delicious. The pasta was cooked to perfection, al dente, and the sauce was rich and creamy, with just the right amount of smokiness from guanciale. The combination of pecorino romano cheese and freshly cracked black pepper made it a true Roman delight. Pasta Imperiale is definitely a must-visit place for anyone on the budget and looking to experience the best Roman pasta. Right after that, we made our way to Two Sizes, a legendary spot renowned for its tiramisu magic. Nestled on Via del Giverno Vecchio, this gem offers two sizes of tiramisu, small and large. That's where the name comes from. Two Sizes is the talk of the town, boasting reviews that sing praises of its authentic flavors and cozy vibe. The friendly staff and unmatched tiramisu have earned it a cult following. Many visitors claim it's the best tiramisu they ever tasted, making it an unmissable dessert destination in Rome. The lineup shows the popularity of this place. It can look daunting, but don't be fooled, it moves very fast, making the wait totally worth it. We decided to try two flavors. First, pistacchio tiramisu and lemon tiramisu. And wow, it was a revelation. creamy mascarpone, perfectly soaked lady fingers, and just the right amount of sweetness made every bite a delight. Afterwards, we visited the Piazza della Rotonda, where the Pantheon proudly stands. This ancient marvel, originally built as a temple for all Roman gods, has stood the test of time since its completion in 126 AD. The pillars of the Pantheon are a marvel of ancient engineering. Each of the 16 massive columns, standing at about 39 feet tall, is made from a single piece of granite, quarried in Egypt. Imagine how hard it was to deliver them at that time. One of the most interesting features of the Pantheon is its massive dome. The dome with a diameter of 43 meters was the largest in the world for over 1300 years. At its center is the oculus, an 8 meter wide circular opening that lets in natural light, creating a mystical atmosphere within the temple. With its lively vibe, Piazza della Rotonda was a perfect blend of history and relaxation, making it a memorable part of our day in Rome. After our fascinating visit to the Pantheon, we couldn't resist doing another lap around the city on the bus during sunset. The golden hour cast a magical glow over Rome's ancient buildings and monuments, making everything look absolutely stunning. Then we hopped off at the Jewish ghetto of Rome, where we encountered the somber side of cobblestones bearing the names of individuals taken away during the Nazi regime. This powerful reminder of history was truly moving and made me reflect on the current situation back home in Ukraine, where Russia's attacks continue to bring daily hardship and suffering. If you're exploring Rome on foot, here's a handy tip for you. The city is dotted with numerous water fountains providing drinkable water. Scan the QR code on one of the fountains and you'll get the access to the app that maps out all the water stations across Rome. 
This not only helps you stay hydrated, but can also save you a bit of money. As the sun went down, we headed to one of the coolest secret spots in the city, the Aventine Keyhole. See this lineup? We spent like half an hour to take a pic. This hidden gem offers a perfectly framed view of St. Peter's Basilica through a keyhole in the gate of the Priory of the Kings of Malta. And guess what? We will visit the St. Peter's Basilica in the next episode, so subscribe and stay tuned! By the way, around the corner there is observation point providing the great view of the city, so if you don't want to spend time in the lineup, just go there! As evening embraced the city, I understood one thing. Every place you visit in Rome deserves two visits. Once in the daylight to explore its depth and appreciate its details, and once at night to truly feel the magic. So we made our way to the Capitoline Hill, or Campidoglio. The Piazza del Campidoglio, designed by Michelangelo, is at the heart of the hill. The piazza features an elegant geometric pattern and is surrounded by the Palazzo Senatorio, Palazzo dei Conservatori and Palazzo Nuovo, housing the Capitoline Museums, which boasts an impressive collection of ancient Rome statues, art and artifacts. However, our destination was the statue of Romulus and Remus, depicting the legendary twins nurtured by a she-wolf. Seeing it under the soft glow of the night lights added an almost mystical touch to the legend. To be honest, I enjoy Rome more at night. The temperature is comfortable and the crowds thin out, letting the city's true magic shine through. To finalize the day, we went for dinner at La Nuova Piazzetta, a legendary pasta and pizza place in Rome. This cozy spot has earned great reviews, just search them up online. The lineup was huge, and we couldn't get a table on the patio, so we went inside. The place was tiny, and the tables were very close to each other, so European, right? The main thing, the friendly and nice stuff, made us feel right at home. We ordered two things, pasta bolognese and pizza golosa. The pasta bolognese was absolutely delicious, the sauce was rich and flavorful and the pasta was cooked to perfection. It was true taste of Italy. But the pizza golosa completely blew my mind. Topped with mozzarella, mortadella, burrata and pistachio, it was a symphony of flavors. Each bite was a burst of deliciousness that I will never forget. We finished our meal with Nutella and pistachio panna cotta. And oh my god, it was divine. The creamy texture and the perfect balance of sweetness made it the perfect ending to an incredible meal. An incredible day. Alright everyone, that's a wrap for today's journey, but hold on tight, because in the next episode we'll be diving even deeper in the Rome's fascinating spots. I can see that you like this video, so don't forget to click that subscribe button to not miss the next episode. Thank you, see you soon!